Hi, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration into the temperature sensor TMP36 and also the implementation of a low pass filter, also known as an RC circuit, effectively to filter out um, noisy signals on the temperature sensor. So the contents, I'll go through the temperature sensor, the low pass filter, so the RC circuit time solution, and also details of the time constant. Then go through the temperature sensor combined with the low pass filter and finally move on to the summary. So after this lecture, you'll be able to understand how a temperature sensor, TMP36, is used along with a low pass filter, in this case, also known as an RC circuit, to effectively reject high frequency signals. So in terms of the temperature sensor, TMP36, you'll see it given here, it has effectively three pins where you can see voltage in and then voltage out. The voltage out is analog, um, an analog reading. So effectively it'll be like a continuous signal like temperature. Okay, so it'll look something, I don't know, something like that. And then the final pin here is the ground. Okay, so you have voltage in, so effectively you power it up, ground to complete the circuit, and then the middle pin is like the output signal, which is effectively we're going to use to read the temperature. So you can see it here connected up to an Arduino Uno. So this is effectively a microcontroller that uh, in this case we're just using to power up the temperature sensor and also to collect the data. So you can see here the red wire here is connected to this pin, these are known as pins, which is going to give us 5 volts. And you can see here the black wire is connected to something called a ground. So effectively this completes the circuit. The middle pin, as I said, is effectively our analog um, signal. And this is effectively a reading we're going to get here that we're going to use to, to effectively determine what the temperature is. So you can see we placed it in this analog in pin, which is A4. Can put, you can effectively read it up to any of these, but anyway, we've collected this pin here, and this is effectively what it's going to read is in this middle pin here is it's going to read values between. I'm not going to go into the details here, so this is this bit might be a little bit confusing. I do have an, another video that details uh, exactly what's going on here, um, but values between zero and five volts, and that reading there between 0 and 5 volts is effectively converted to temperature measurements between minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 125 degrees Celsius. So all you have to imagine is that a temperature value is coming into that pin there and we're effectively enable uh, us to view it. Um, <clears throat> and as I said here, how to convert the analog V out into a useful reading, i.e. measuring degrees Celsius, is not covered in this video. Okay, I do have another video where it's covered. So what you can see here is the unfiltered signal from the temperature sensor. It's reading a value of around 22.5, between 23, something like that. It's quite noisy, a lot of kind of high frequency signals on that data. So if we just take a step back and if we recall where we looked at the RC circuit time solution for the low pass filter. OK, so I'm calling it now a low pass filter that's effectively what we're using the RC circuit for because what we're using it for is effectively you can see these high frequency signals here we're using it if we pass a signal through this low pass this RC circuit what it does is it rejects high frequency signals and then we end up with like a signal that's i.e you can see without this high frequency stuff here so if we recall the time solution for an RC circuit charging being given via this equation here. So V subscript C, which is a charging over the capacity, was equal to voltage in and then one take away this exponential to the power of minus T over RC. Where if you recall RC was effectively denoted the time constant and V subscript IN, V voltage in, denotes the system gain. And the system gain effectively tells us the final value of the system when it's in steady state and the time constant tells us how long it takes for the system to get to steady state. So in this lecture what we're going to do is we're going to use values for the resistor a value of a thousand ohms and for the capacitor a thousand um, microfarad.
Okay, so 10 to the power of minus 6. So, therefore, the system gain and time constant are given by the final values. Because I told you the system gain is equal to the voltage in, which in this case we're just going to initially say is 5. Okay, we're, we're sticking to voltage here, but in reality that voltage there really means a temperature. So, in the case, if you remember, the upper limit of the temperature would, would, would be related to that. But it, it's okay for the time being. And the time constant here is RC, which in this case is 1. Because if we multiply the capacitor by the resistors, the resistor value would get a value of one. So, in kind of the outputs in in Fermi simulation, we should get outputs that look like this. So, if you remember, one time constant being effectively equal to 63.2 percent of the final value of the system, or in this case, because obviously this, it, the output amplitude is the initial output times by the input which in this case is 5 is going to be 3.160 but that might not, not necessarily be relevant to what we're looking at so it might be useful more to look at the first two columns so one time constant 63.2 percent five time constant 99 percent okay so that's quite useful so that's going to tell us 99 percent at pretty much we're at steady state so in this case you can use five time constant five seconds you can see there pretty much 99% of the final value of the system, pretty much in steady state. One time constant, so one second, is 63.2% of the final value of the system. And again, we are, well, there the value you can see. These values aren't so, it depends very much on what you're looking at. I know I told you we're not going to go into too much detail in terms of the relationship between the temperature and the voltage and, you know, what, what the actual Arduino you know, is doing to get a temperature value. Um, and, and like this, like I said, this case, I've just stuck to it being the voltage in, but these here could be the temperature, the, the temperature value here could be the maximum temperature, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, whatever the voltage, the, the gain value is, all it is anyway, is just, a, it's just the multiplier of the final value. Depending on whatever that value is, it could be 10. It would still take exactly the same amount of time to get to the final value of the system. So what I have now is originally you saw the temperature sensor now what i've introduced is this capacitor and this resistor in series what you'll notice is that the configuration is very much the same however for the temperature sensor however i've taken here the signal so effectively here you know originally there was a an a potential difference between this point and this point between zero and five volts now you can see I've taken it off here and I've completed it, completed this series circuit and then I'm feeding back this value here back to A4. So what this is doing is it's passing this, this effectively this, um, well the current's going to throw through here. You're then going to get the capacitor that's going to charge up to whatever the voltage is. In this case it's going to be 5 so it's going to charge up. Then um, Effectively, yeah, the reading is going to come back to 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 A4. What we're going to get is a filtered or unfiltered signal, sorry, at A0, and we're going to get the filter signal at A4, the signal that's been passed through the resistor and capacitor. What I told you to begin with was that there was going to be effectively a five second charging time, because you know our time constant is one, so five times tau is five seconds. So I originally just show you this, this yellow line here is of the capacitor charging up. And you can see here it takes around five seconds to charge. And then if we look at the second video here, what you'll see is the blue line is the unfiltered data and the yellow signal is the data or the signal, sorry, that's being passed through the resistor and capacitor. And you can see there what it does is it effectively rejects any high frequency signals so the blue line has got lots of high frequency signals and it kind of eliminates that high frequency signal and in terms of when you move on to control or it's not going to be so obvious today but if when you go on to control that signal there becomes a lot lot more useful or a lot more practical to use okay signals that are kind of erratic with that high frequency signal is no real good for control okay so the the kind of the smoother it's more useful in terms of control method the initial kind of obviously we had a five second lag so that five seconds that it took to charge up the capacitor um, is obviously five seconds where effectively we have no information 
Um, but again, you could reduce that by reducing the time constant, i.e. the resistor capacitor value or the product of those two, so to reduce that lag. But that does actually affect the ability to filter or how well you filter. So in summary, it's been demonstrated how a temperature sensor TMP36 is used with a low pass filter, i.e. the RC circuit. You can see here the resistor and the capacitor with the temperature sensor to effectively reject high frequency signals. So that's very, very useful for when you get onto a control system. So temperature control in a room um, whereby you don't want that noise on the data. So resistor capacitor circuit will reject the high frequency signals and it will give you overall better control performance because for a control system you need to be able to measure the temperature and then obviously take action depending on whether you want the room to be hotter or cool or whatever um so resistor capacitor the temperature sensor there is a little bit that might get confused in this video but as you go through your studies it will make more sense so when i was obviously saying um, voltage and um, temperature because there is some bits that goes on in terms of the algorithm where we're, we're converting effect to the reading from the the RC circuit where we get a voltage and we're converting that into a readable temperature value. But for now, just accept low pass filter is very, very effective for rejecting high frequency signals and the time that it takes for that resistor and capacitor circuit to charge up is effectively based on the time constant. So RC, so resistor capacitor value, where five time constants is like 99% of the, of the, the charge, well, effectively the charge or the of the final value of the of the system or the, the, the circuit for, for it to obviously charge up. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.